Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Minjay. I am an under, a rising. I mean, I'm a junior at the Johns Hopkins University. Um, the point of this video, and then all the videos that I will start from at this point, are just some of the lectures I am concurrently running, uh, learning at the biochem. Uh, biochem. When I'm taking biochemistry at this point, so this is a lecture for me to kind of understand and follow through and review the materials I've learned uh, in the past week or so. And also a chance for you to kind of um, for you guys to kind of follow through uh, uh, for different um, chapters that I'll be learning um, with me as well. Um, to, so this is the first chapter of the, of the biochem. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to kind of share the, all the details and some steps in learning. Um, so today we'll talk about the type of bonds. So um, so there are, are uh, the main main a main bond that you're interested in versus a covalent. Covalent is uh, it's a relatively strong bond uh, between uh, two atoms uh, that share electrons. Electrons. Now, there's a separate category of a bond, which is not really a bond, but more of an interaction. Uh, they're called non-covalent. Non covalent. No, there are actually uh, three types or even four types if you look at um if you uh, uh, categorize them more specifically. Uh, first, there we have the uh, um, name ionic uh, hydrogen interaction, or uh, commonly known as hydrogen bonding, uh, and then we have the the van der Waals. Uh, sometimes some of the textbook includes um, the fourth type of a uh, fourth type of non-covalent interaction. It's called hydrophobic interaction, uh, but I'll get to that shortly. I laugh. Okay, so uh, before I kind of jump in and describe um, uh, uh, characteristics for, for the, uh, each type of covalent and non-covalent bonds. I'll, uh, let me just kind of mention the general bond strength uh, for each type of interaction. So first, um, covalent has the strongest um, uh, uh, bond strength and therefore the strongest, strongest, strongest interaction. So um, generally speaking, covalent bond has around 400 kilo, um, kilojoules per mole of bond strength. Uh, and then um, the the one that comes right after is the ionic interaction or, ion, or ionic bond, which is about 100, 100 kilojoules per mole. Uh, and then the uh, third one is the uh, hydrogen bond. So I'm, I'm just going to abbreviate as H bond from this, this point. Uh, so 20 kilojoules per mole. Uh, and then and then we have the uh, van der Waals. Oh, shoot. Van der Waals. Van der Waals. Uh, about it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty weak, so it's only a single digit, so around two to five kilojoules per mole. So as you can see, uh, the covalent is the most the strongest bond um, above all type of interactions that may occur within the biomolecules, followed by ionic, ionic bond, the hydrogen bond, and the, lastly, the van der Waals. Now, let's start with um, covalent bond. Covalent. Covalent bond. Covalent bond. Now, covalent bond. So recall that um, uh, remember uh, your general chemistry, uh, the uh, covalent bond or even bonds that are made by uh, the valence electrons um, uh, in, each, in each of the atoms. So for example, the carbon uh, can make or carbon or different atoms can make different um, number number of bonds, uh, different number of covalent bonds. So, for example, carbon C, um, um, it is um, it has four four valence electrons, so it can make uh, four bonds total. So that's why we call it tetravalent. So, uh, if you look in the diagram, uh, it, it just has that, uh, and then there you have you have any type of atom that might bond to for each, for each of the single bonds. Uh, the either the nitrogen. Uh, 
bond has five protovalence electrons, so which means that you'll um, number of bonds it will have total uh, will be three to kind of satisfy the octet rule. So it should be trivalent. Uh, so let's, let's just say the number of bonds can make it three. Uh, the last one, I mean, I'm um, not the last one. So oxygen. Oh, so this one has six valence electrons, which means um, in order to satisfy the octet rule, you'll have two valence electrons. So we call it divalent. So simple Greek prefixes. So uh, the last but not least, hydrogen, uh, which is quite important and basically the, as a fundamental for all the biochemistry. Um, uh, this one, um, it has one valence electrons, and since it is only it only um, occupies the S orbital, it will um, have it will make only one bond uh, with, with each of the hydrogen atom, which means uh, it will be monovalent. Monovalent. So. Oh. Okay, so that is the main characteristics and basically number of bonds uh, uh, each specific atom can make um, uh, based on whether it's, whether, it's a, whether it's a monovalent, divalent, tetravalent, or uh, trivalent and tetravalent. And obviously uh, the number of bonds can change if, you, if one atom makes a double bond or triple bond, but these are just some, some general characteristics of a covalent bond. Now, ionic bond. Ionic bond. All right. So ionic bond, ionic bond. Um, com, uh, when you compare the ionic bond with covalent bond, is the covalent bond is more um a bond that is formed by the sharing of electrons, whereas for ionic bond, it is um it is a basic interaction between two charges. So for example, uh, let's look, let's look at it graphically. I mean, uh, visually. Uh, so let's say there are uh, one atom with the charge Q one, and the other atom with charge Q two. And then there is the distance r. All right. So recall on um, uh, general physics two um, that the, the energy between the, these two charges or these two charge atoms can be uh, written as uh, k, which is the Coulomb's constant, q1 and q2, and dr. So this d um, it just represents represents the dielectric constant. Uh, so which it kind of it kind of depends on uh, basically any any material um, that any type of or I, I guess difference in material that uh, which is not an air it can be a liquid so that can um, uh, be between uh, this these two charged atoms and um, for the R uh, it just means the uh, I mean calling means radius but in, in in this case it just means the distance between the two atoms so distance. Oh, and then uh, let's leave that. That's Coulomb's constant. Okay, nice. Okay, okay. Mm, right. So here, note that the um, uh, when you, when you recall back to um, I guess uh, your, your your middle school um, physics is that the opposite charges attract, right? So therefore, since opposite opposite charges attract. Uh, there will be a, a product between the two charges. Um, I mean, so the, 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 the uh, interaction between the two charges will be more favorable when the two charges have the opposite um, signs. So it will be our uh, interaction will be more favorable. Uh, when Q1 uh, as opposite charge uh, and Q2. So um, uh, to, to write this more simply, we can just state that the interaction is favorable when Q1 or product between Q1 and Q2 is less than zero. Yeah, so obviously, uh, by, uh, by depending on the which signs, so maybe if Q1 uh, is positive and Q2 is positive or vice versa, Q1 is negative or Q2 is, uh, Q2 is negative, then that uh, obviously that uh, interaction will be unfavorable because they, um, because they have the same charges, they will try to repel each other. Um, whereas, um, like I mentioned, um, the favorable interaction will occur 
when the uh, when the Q1 and Q2 there are an opposite charges. the charges now uh, let's talk about the hydrogen bond and hydrogen bond is really important uh, because this is what kind of governs um, or uh, um, de um, that determines the structure of not only your DNA or, or, or amino acids, amino acids but uh, by, by, by determining the structure it will also determine the function of each amino acid or DNA um, so which is which is really crucial to maintaining uh, uh, what we are right now for example, um, so I'm just gonna characterize uh, the, uh, the, the, I guess the reason why hydrogen bonding um, occurs in the first place. Um, uh, so the main reason why hydrogen bonding occurs between two atoms is that it, it is because due to the, um, uh, I guess the difference in electronegativity. So, so let me just start with, uh, I guess, characterizing the electronegativity for different atoms. Uh, so there's one of the oxygen, nitrogen, uh, so here I'm just kind of labeling um, uh, uh, the only, the, only the most common atom you might see uh, in bio, oh my god, yeah, in biochem. So right, so uh, yeah. So electronegativity for um, oxygen is, is pretty high. So it should be, it should be, it should be about 3.5. Uh, for uh, nitrogen, uh, also electronegative, about 3.0. Uh, but carbon is about 2.1, and the lowest one of a hydrogen is 2.5. Uh, I'm sorry, so I'm sorry, 2.5 for carbon. Uh, my apologies, and then 2.1 for hydrogen. Now, here, um, because there is uh, this difference in electronegativity, for example, when the carbon or uh, oxygen is bound to uh, bound to carbon, um, or even a uh, carbon is bound to. Uh, or, or nitrogen is bound to hydrogen, there is that stark this um, difference in electronegativity. So for example, um, if there are two uh, um, like adjacent um, like atom or even functional groups um, right next to each other. So for example, uh, we have uh, this carbon, um, carbonyl groups that are shown over here. Um, the, the electrons are actually delocalized de because due to the electronegativity. So all the, most of the electrons, they're localized and they're pushed upwards uh, near uh, this oxygen. So this part, uh, since it has more oxygen co concentration, it will have a, uh, the signs of an of a uh, partial negative. And then uh, for down here, for this carbon, um, since it has lacking number of oxygen, it will have a sign, or we call it the, the, uh, the delta plus, or the partial positive. So if you look into uh, that into more of a macro level by within the interaction between the two functional groups, for example, uh, you can see as positive, uh, delta negative, uh, and then here, and then for example, uh, then maybe you have a nitrogen coming out, and maybe delta H over here, uh, and because there is also a um, this different difference in electronegativity between the nitrogen and the hydrogen, uh, what that means is that it, the nitrogen part over here will also experience delta negative, and here. Yeah, hydrogen which is at the positive. So notice that there is, even though uh, there is no formal charge um, of, of uh, hydrogen and oxygen, because of that difference in the, in the uh, electronegativity, there is that um, this uh, di uh, I guess uh, change this I guess a uh, non-uniform distribution of this um, uh, uh, the electrons. So uh, recall that uh, from the ion interaction, the reason why um, the, the I guess to, the two charges are tracked because there is this opposite. Um, I mean, I, I, I get opposite, opposite charges here. So notice that this is um, the positive, 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 and for in the oxygen, there's positive negative, which is now partially negative. For example, you will have that this like minute electrostatic interaction, and uh, and then it causes some like, attractive forces between them, and that is what we call the hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding. Huh. Okay. So, so to, uh, to summarize, the definition of hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding, it basically means on um, interaction between uh, non hydrogen atom. 
hydrogen atom. With, uh, with partial positive. So this is uh, this is what it means for partial positive. Oh, and a separate atom. Atom. So in this case, um, uh, any atom may, maybe that has some high electro um electronegativity, so may probably oxygen. Uh, like we see in the, in the case above, or nitrogen, uh, with a partial negative. So uh, this, uh, having that uh, partial positive and partial negative interaction, so uh, they'll interact, I mean, they'll try to attract each other. And that is the fundamentals of why hydrogen bonding occurs in the first place. All right. Um, the third um, uh, the non -covalent, covalent interaction um that I mentioned here is the called van der Waals. Van der Waals. All right. So, uh, van der Waals. Um, it is a uh, not not quite intuitive, but uh, the main I guess the strength of van der Waals uh, kind of depends on the distance between two uh, two adjacent adjacent atoms. On. Um, Distance between two atoms. Atoms. Okay. So let's see. Uh, um, let me explain what that means. So we over here. Then we have. Then. So the here. Um, I have uh, the uh, the y-axis is basically the uh, interaction. So everything that is above, um, I guess, the zero line or the uh, x-axis, we call that a repulsion. And everything down here, we call that attraction. And for the uh, x-axis, we label that as distance between the two, um, two adjacent atoms. So for example. Um, so I'm um, uh, what I'm trying to do, and I'm sure everybody, um, uh, people who took um, general chemistry will uh, will kind of notice this is that uh, the same diagram is that we have this uh, I guess concave a uh, curve uh, in the function of the interaction versus the distance. Um, and then right, and we call that a minimum point. So this is where. Um, so, so uh, if you look at the function, that's the point where we have the maximum attraction. So the min min minimum point is basically a distance, uh, the optimal distance between two atoms, I guess optimal distance, that maximizes, uh, maximizes uh, the uh, Van der Waals interaction, or uh, in this case, Van der Waals attraction. Um, uh, uh, one more thing to notice is that um, here, um, as the distance uh, uh, gets smaller between the two atoms, you see uh, this swerving wave of interaction, uh, I mean attraction. But uh, as soon as you pass them, this minimum point, um, uh, if because of the, uh, I guess, um, for example, uh, if if you have two atoms, they get they get too close, uh, the the proton between them, um, they start to repel repel each other. So that's why we see some signs where um, um, if, if we decrease the uh, distance between the two atoms sufficiently enough that we see some um, increasing the repulsion between them. So that's where the uh, uh, repulsion occurs uh, when atoms uh, approach too closely. Um, uh, some of the features to mention uh, about the Van der Waals uh, interaction is that first of all, like I mentioned, it is a very weak, uh, weak interaction. So notice that the, uh, uh, I guess the strength of the Van der Waals was, also, um, was only a two, two to five kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole. 
Uh, and one and one uh, point to note is that since all the atoms have uh, this capacity of getting closer to each other, we're going to repel each other. Um, well, um, all the atoms or even molecules um, uh, per se um, have or, or exhibit van der Waals. With other, with, other, with other atoms um, within, within the molecule or um, between, between the molecules. Nice. Now, that being said, let me define the, the fundamental definition about what Van der Waals is, the definition. Um, it is uh, attractive when the distance between uh, the two atoms are sufficiently large enough uh, or, or repulsive if the distance uh, between two atoms are close enough um, that all atoms experience that, um, yeah all, all atoms experience. Uh, based on distance, so this is a this is this is is a key uh, when you try to quantify what the I guess the strength of van der Waals um, uh, between between the uh, um, two adjacent atoms. Alrighty, so that to today I um, um just gave a little overview uh, about um kind of about the I guess the type of bond. So. I just kind of give a little re recap. I mentioned the general properties and definition of a covalent, covalent bond, and uh, the same uh, same features of a, for non for the four types for actually three types of non covalent bond: the ion, ionic bond, hydrogen bonding, and van der Waals. Uh, in our next segment, I'll try to um, I'll try to mention the hydro hydrophobic interaction and how that relates to the thermodynamic um, that we uh, that we observe in um, biomolecules.